Now, jumping straight into part two, we've got questions for Antoine, again, more about in-depth Catalan design. Antoine, welcome back. We have some questions about pointing ability. This is something we read in all the Catalan forums about that people worry that if they buy a Catalan, it is not going to point as high. Now, the question is, how do you make sure that that boats and catarans especially point high and specifically how important are dagger boards to this because there's so much written about dagger boards and you're the person you're the man to tell us so dagger boards and pointing yeah so so it's true that generally catamaran they don't point as high as monohull but they compensate by uh, thanks to the higher speed so finally they, they can reach the final destination quicker even if they don't point as high um, and yeah, we can improve the, the, the pointing ability by adding dagger boards, um, but also in a different uh, way. Um, if with the balance of the boat, uh, if the boat, if the catamaran uh, has a tendency to go naturally slightly windward, it will help. Not too much, but slightly windward, it will help. Um, also, another thing is the immersed bow forefoot. The very end of the bow, um, oh, I don't, maybe you call this the bow knuckle, the bow. The bow, the bow. The, 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 basically, the, the angle between the bow and uh, going yeah, up to the stem head fitting yeah. well, on a mono hull. So this, yeah. uh, this participate to the empty drift plan. Um, if the bow stay immersed, uh, especially while the catamaran is hobby horsing, it's, uh, it's better, it will help uh, for your pointing ability. Um, also, you have the hull shape. Um, if it's a U, like a hull shape, in a, like a U shape, uh, from the bow to the transom, yes. you will have a, a vertical plane uh, that will uh, like go, yeah. Stop leeway. Uh, you do catamarans more on a, on a rail. Okay, so let me just see if I've understood this. So basically what you're trying to do is stop leeway and get the boat tracking in a straight line. Now, obviously people understand that that is, a dag a you know, dagger boards will help that. But the two things that you've addressed now, number one is the actual, the very, you know, the, the point at which the, the bow you know the bow meets the meets the hull so the, the, what is called the bow knuckle and basically as long as that is in the water that is providing the tracking because it's actually sat in the water but um if the boat is kind of hobby horsing up and down because that part of the boat is not immersed in the water you get more leeway that's correct that makes a lot of sense actually in this you know in the same way that if you're trying to if you're trying to slice butter and you don't have or trying to saw a piece of wood and you don't have the tip in you know in the material it goes all over the place so you need you need to define your define your track whether it's butter or catamarans that's correct correct totally correct <laughs> okay perfect and the second thing that i believe that you've just said is that if we take two examples of leeway now we're talking about the cross section of hull here if you have arbitrarily a perfect semicircle in cross section compared to say something which is flat sided but yet has uh, a circle uh, you know a curve at the bottom those uh, high sides and those the kind of the angle the, you know having sides that go more straight up and down stops leeway because it, you know literally it's the resistance of water um, laterally so when you're designing catamaran sh hull shape you are looking at the the angle of the, uh, the, 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 the the top sides to, to the water uh, and making sure there's less curve in there. That's correct, yeah? That's correct, yeah, that's right. Perfect, so those two things, that's, that's really interesting. So, you know, we've talked about things like this before, you know, but yeah, it's interesting that these small points, and again, I think I really do want to reiterate here that at this time, you do need to look and have this information when you're looking at the cross section of a boat that you intend to buy. So if you're looking at a hull design, I mean, we've already discussed in part one, and if you haven't seen part one of this technical series, uh, the link is up here, that there is so much in looking at the cross section of a boat, which any manufacturer will be able to give you. Uh, but that will define firstly performance, but now we're talking about pointing ability. So again, I know that, you know, we've talked about this before. Is this experience 
do you know? Do you rely on a, a long history of having designed catamarans or previous catamarans that you personally have designed, or look to other designs on the market and you think, well, that worked really well and that didn't work? I mean, how do you? How does it work? Do you kind of build on the experience of others? Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's um, the biggest part of designing catamaran is look at what already exists and uh, what works. And then you can validate by the calculation. Um, I think no, no, there is no naval architect that uh, start only with the numbers. Um, it's a really uh, empiric. empirical. Empirical. So, so you. So basically, it's. Would you say it's more art or more science to designing this? Hmm. Um, you're French, so you're going to say art, oh, aren't you? I, I know. Yeah, it's going to be it's the, the French flair for design. <laughs> Surely, this is where it comes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe 60% art and 40% science. <laughs> You, that, that's a good way to go through life, Antoine. I mean, I, I would suggest that. But I mean, so, I mean, obviously, we've seen a lot of catamaran designs, and, you know, the French really, after Warham cats and those kind of Polynesian cats, really pioneered catamaran design in the 70s and 80s. And you see a lot of like garage built catamarans, and they're still floating around today. But obviously, with computer aided design and wind tunnels and, you know, fl the, it, it, the, you know, the ability to assess fluid dynamics, this is all changing. So, there must be designs that have broken the mold over the years. And I, obviously you look to things that have worked through innovation, either in racing, that you've then adopted. Um, yes, yeah, if we, we use, it's called computer, computational flu, fluid dynamics, CFD. Um, <clears throat> so really it's like a, a towing a boat on your computer, but you don't have to, uh, you don't have to build the model and, uh, and uh, make a lot of uh, tests. So that's, that's the 40% of science. You, you kind of use a, you as a fluid dynamic program to kind of work out that, the, you know, the, the forces laterally and, okay. Yeah, to gain uh, maybe 10, 20%. Perfect. And one thing you mentioned before is that pointing capability is defined by speed. Now that does apply with monoholes. You know, the faster you're going, the the the, the easier it is to track through the water. So, can you just tell, explain that in with regard to catamarans? Yeah. So, really, either a dagger board or a mini keel, they have to have a flow uh, sp flow speed uh, to work so efficiently. Um, mm -hmm. Because inter an interesting uh, things to to know is when the um, when the speed increased by, by two, the, the, the load, the force, uh, the lift uh, increased by four. So the coefficient of two. The, yeah, the coefficient of two, that's the, the formula of the, of the lift. Okay, so, so from that point of view, so really what we're looking at is, so talking dagger boards aside, so we're looking at the shape of the hull is gonna affect the tracking ability, the cross section of the hull, the kind of like essentially the, the part of the rocker which is that that last angle and how well that's tracking through the water and then we're looking at speed and how obviously the faster you're going the better so if you've got a boat and this goes back to our our previous discussion if you've got a boat that is over you know it's got too much weight on board and the trim is affected and then you're losing performance because you put too much on board and you put a bread maker and you know an extra set of weights Teresa um, on board then then that then goes into affecting so there's like a massive knock-on effect that you know i mean and i never realized this i understood that you know performance is affected by over you know putting too much weight onto a catamaran but it now with going into pointing ability because of all these factors you've mentioned yeah it makes everything worse actually uh, um, performance pointing ability um and one more thing for the pointing ability is the balance people really should uh, go try the boat and see how, how is the balance because um, some catamaran are designed with, um, uh, it's not well balanced. And if it's not well balanced, it won't, the pointing capability with, would be, can be really bad. Okay, can you define balance for me? So the balance is uh, uh, the capacity, the capacity to, uh, what can I say, to go straight. If you, uh, if you put the steering uh, in the axis, if the boat has naturally go windward, 
Oh, the, the, yeah, so, so okay, so ba yeah, so like when you when you balance a sail plan, so yeah, so if the boat feels balanced, then it's okay. Yeah, so yeah, so the same as you balance sails. So, so the boat feels balanced while you're sailing. Yeah, exactly. And so you can calculate this. Um, uh, it's between the center of effort of the sail, of the whole sail plan, and the center of effort of the uh, cumulated, uh, projected surface area of your uh, of your hull and daggerboard or keel under the water line. So, uh, so under the water. So yeah, so it's basically it's 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 yeah the, the balance between you know area above the water and below the water and making sure those work in harmony. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now this is going to be a, probably something which is going to explode the internet, and we're going to talk about daggerboards because there is so much written about daggerboards and how they are the savior of catamaran sailing. But the thirteen seventy is not going to have daggerboards. It's going to have mini keels. So. I want you to give us a broad overview of daggerboards and then we'll dive into parts of that afterwards. So, yeah, the pro of the daggerboard, um, so first they improve the maneuverability and the rudder reactivity because the cut uh, is on pivot point. Um, so it does help your, your rudder reactivity. Um, the daggerboard can be lifted to reduce the drag at high speed or downwind, you can get closer to the shore. Uh, but the system, the whole system, is heavier, and uh, it tends to more maintenance. Um, yeah, so daggerboards lift. So they reduce. Um, you can lift them up to reduce drag, and then there's obviously a discussion about you know is that in heavy seas on beam seas easier and stops the boat tripping up itself. But then obviously there's the cost of construction. There's the weight there's the maintenance, and then there's the additional expense in building a boat with that system in place. So daggerboard boat to non-daggerboard boat, we are still talking pointing ability. Yeah. Of course, so we're talking, say we're talking a boat, if you can build a boat which is identical, but one's got daggerboards and one's got mini keels, what are we gonna talk about pointing ability? Let's talk about the 1370. If you took the 1370 and put daggerboards on it, how much higher would it point? Um, it can be from five to fifteen percent, fifty sorry degrees, five to fifteen okay. degrees more. Yeah. Okay. So and that depend. Okay. So basically, so the daggerboards do definitely give uh, a much higher pointing ability. Um, but is that pointing ability in a performance catamaran going to be comparable to a monohull? Because this is what we were saying when we charted in Thailand. I, I keep saying in the videos, if we could find a catamaran that sails like a monohull, then you know y you've got the best of everything. And a lot of things that we have, that we, you know, the one reason we were tempted to sea wind over from the you know monohulls is because they, when we test sail them, they are, they sail pretty well. So um, daggerboards would increase that even further. Yes. So. One thing we have discussed, actually, and this is a surprise to me, that when you design a dagger board, they don't just one size. There's a lot in the design. And I remember talking to you before about something that you said that when you design a dagger board, you have to design it for a certain speed. Otherwise, it's just inefficient. Can you go through that with me, please? Um, so you would design to a certain speed, yes. But uh, on the dagger board, you can, you can lift. So you can, you can change your... Uh, the amount of daggerboard you want in the water, um, so it's really versatile. Uh, so you design the daggerboard for low speed, but if you does, if you do, if you, if you go to high speed, you can lift the daggerboard, and um, um, but the daggerboard really should work uh, from uh, from two three knots of uh, of uh, boat speed. But when you design a daggerboard for say, say for instance a Sea Wind sixteen hundred, or let's just talk to let's let's move away from Sea Wind to talk about you know Balance or Uchmer or or Katana, you know these catamarans that are built with daggerboards. You design is that daggerboard designed specifically to have an operating range which is optimal? So say for instance, this is going to be the most effective if the boat is doing say ten knots. So yeah, if you have the daggerboard fully down, and if your cats does uh, 20 knots, clearly there is too much daggerboard uh, on the water. You don't need, a, um, what can I say, um, 
if the tiger board is fully down, you um, it's optimum till uh, eight knot. Of uh, I mean, it depend of it depend of the board, depend of the architect. Um, but um, the, the, the the good thing about dagger board is you can you can change, you can lift lift up the dagger board. So what we've got, if we're talking about dagger boards. So the, pro, the 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 cons to dagger boards, it's heavier, it adds maintenance, it's there's an expense. But you know the, what you do get from this is that the boat the boat points higher. Uh, and that's and and you have variable draft, which means that you can adjust that to the to the sea conditions and the conditions that you want to sail in. Yeah, uh, yeah, it takes takes for him. Yeah. yeah. So mini keels, obviously, people understand mini keels, but talk to me the basics of mini keels, and then talk to me about how that even that design varies between different models. Um. Mini keys are pretty pretty simple. They can um, they don't vary much between uh, between catamaran. Um, some are um, most of the mini keys are built in the mold, um, but I don't see a lot of variation between uh, between the different brand of catamaran for the mini keys. Um, they all have a low aspect ratio. Um, they are. There is no maintenance. They are really strong. Uh, they free up the space inside the hull. Okay, so just to conclude, you know, in episode one or in part one of these technical videos, we discussed hull shape and how hull shape affects performance. And now we've added dagger boards to that. So we've now got, you know, in the kind of composite construction of our, you know, our theoretical boat, we've designed the hull, and now we've put mini keels on it or dagger boards, and that's further affected performance. So. If you, if I put a, you know, a gun to your head or threaten to take your wine away and said, look, Antoine, what percentage is hull shape and what percentage is the dagger board, you know, with regards to performance? How much does the dagger board, you know, what's that ratio of hull shape to to dagger board regarding performance? So, is the is the hull shape more important or the dagger board more? Important? Hull shape, but also the weight. Yeah, if you have a, if you have a heavy boat, even if yeah, it's the weight, hull shape. And then the dagger board. So weight, hull shape, then dagger boards. So if you took if you took a very heavy, you know, cruising catamaran and just put dagger boards on it, it wouldn't really affect it that much. No, no. Yeah, it's um, it's not it's not worth it. Um, but I'd say the dagger board are, um, can be good if you like. If you like controlling, tweaking the trim, if you're really in a search of speed, um, if you don't, if you want an easy boat, uh, just go for the mini kits. Um, because, okay, maybe you can go one, two knot faster, but. Uh, yeah, yes, I mean, look, with, Ru with Ruby Rose, we do six knots, so one, two knots faster is, is a significant amount of speed, but obviously catamarans generally sail faster, there's less wetted area in the water, and, you know, at the right point of sail, they will fly, so, yeah, look, it's an interesting discussion, and really, there's a lot, again, I was always under the impression that, you know, it, it, dagger boards make a boat point, and then that's really it, but now it kind of becomes apparent to me that it's not just the dagger boards, that probably more goes into to the the hull design and shape and profile and weight to actually address pointing um, than the dagger boards. Mm. Also, the rudder, uh, the shape of your rudder does help for the for the pointing ability and the maneuverability. Um, that's thing to take into consideration. So, does that mean the deeper and the finer the rudder, the, the higher the pointing? Yeah, yeah. You look at the aspect ratio, uh, so the, the 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 length by the by the the, the the width. So basically, you want a long to to point higher. You want a deep and fine rudder. I mean, that's that's you know. It will it will help. Yeah, it's the yeah, it will help. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so that deals with those two aspects. So we've now covered hull shape and we've covered. Um, 
dagger balls versus mini kills and you know we're then gonna then gonna move in the next episode onto other designs and that's gonna be volume in the hulls how that affects and also the windage of these kind of a high-sided boats so if you are considering either a new or a used boat i hope that this series has given you enough information to go and look at different aspects of hull design keel design rudder design and help you make a more informed choice so thank you so much for watching this episode we will be back again with another technical episode delving even deeper into cataran design so thank you to antoine and we'll see you again soon goodbye and so if you enjoyed that episode, please feel free to join us for the next one when we discuss things such as infusion techniques, bridge deck clearance, writing moment, and of course, what is your Cataran made of? Is it strong enough and suitable enough to take you across oceans safely? So feel free to subscribe and we will see you soon. Goodbye.